In this video I'll be talking about models and prototypes that you can build during the design process. But before you hear from me, let's hear from some truly innovative people. So if I can summarize what they tell us, if you want a truly innovative design, then you want to fail early. Because early in the process, you can still afford to make some mistakes and learn from them. And then fail often. Do it a lot. You're going to learn the most when you do the most number of attempts and learn from them. There are a few good steps that if you follow, you will get successful prototyping. First off, make sure you know why you're doing the prototyping. What is the purpose of this particular prototype? And then, what do you want to simulate in this prototype? Not every prototype can do everything. Once you have those two questions answered, you can choose the prototype form. What are you going to make it out of? What does its shape need to be? And then, go out and make it. Do some testing, do some customer interactions, get the answers that you need. Let's talk about a few types of prototyping. The first level is what I like to call a concept model. Some people call this a very rough prototype or a low cost of entry prototype. And what they are, are simple models that you can build of the key concepts or the key ideas that you have. It uses low cost materials, clay, foam board, paper, plastic. It takes very little time to put one of these together. 15 minutes, you should have a prototype made from this method. But why bother? Why put in any effort to something that's so simple? Well, it turns out there's some very good reasons to do this. These types of simple models actually get you some more ideas. They engage a part of your brain that hasn't been engaged yet in the ideation process and allows you to explore new ideas. It also allows you to do some very basic feasibility checks. You might discover when you put together that simple foam board model that two parts are going to interfere. You have to rethink that design then. And thirdly, it allows you to communicate your ideas with your teammates and possibly also with your sponsor or your users using very little investment. Variations of concept models are used throughout industry. This isn't just a senior project thing. In architecture, you see concept models all the time. In recreational or equipment design, simple paper models are often used to visualize much larger designs, again, at a very low cost of entry. In the automotive industry, a concept model needs more time than 15 minutes to put together, but it is something made from clay that's styled to the final design of a car, and even is often painted to look exactly like a car. Here are a few examples of concept models that were developed for a beach wheelchair project, which was a senior project at Cal Poly in 2013. First off, Legos. Legos are great tools for building concept models of anything that has a motion involved or main structural members. Shock absorbers were considered, a hand crank, something that could float in the water, a adjustable wheel system, a tank tread system. So these are all very crude models, obviously, but they enabled the team very quickly to explore these concepts and convey some basic ideas about them. These are not models that you're going to necessarily hand your sponsor and say, hey, what do you think of this design? They're gonna be things that you explain, but use this as a visual aid during the explanation. So to recap, when you build a concept model, you're gonna be using very simple, readily available, easy to modify materials. Foam board is commonly used for concept models. Lego, connects, erectors, any sort of building toy are great for building concept models. Um, maybe use some wood, but certainly paper, cardboard, foam that can be easily modified, clay or Play-Doh, depending on if you're trying to get a shape out of your concept model or functionality. Anything you find lying around, pull out of a recycle bin, all those things are very useful for concept models. So concept models are used during the ideation phase. You're trying to develop additional ideas, refine some of the ones you have. You're going to make lots of them. You'll do them quickly. You get some quick feedback. 
Once you've settled on a particular concept, you want to move into something that we call the concept prototype. So the concept prototype is some simple demonstration of your complete system. So it shows what your final design will look like and it has some functionality built into it. It's going to be made still from low cost or easy to modify materials. This might be a good point to try some 3D printing if you haven't already or to again perhaps use uh, Lego or Kinect sort of building materials. But you're going to augment that to make it more precise to your final design. So why would you bother to do this? Well, again, you can check some basic performance of your system when you have a functional model. Now, you can't do any full-scale testing because this is not going to be from proper materials. It won't have the right tolerances and so on. But you can see if things will work basically the way you intend. And, of course, communication is a key reason to have a concept prototype to share with your sponsor. Here's what our design looks like. A physical part is so much better than even just pictures. Returning to that beach wheelchair design from 2013, I'm going to show you some concept prototypes. First off, they developed this scissor lift concept made from a wooden camping chair. This is something they were looking at modifying the height of the seat, so they explored whether it was possible to use this scissors mechanism. They also were exploring a sliding rear assembly, so they developed using some very basic materials, you can see a, a sling lawn chair there, um, here it's shown in both a raised and a lowered position. Here's some more examples from the Beach Wheelchair Project. They looked at a design which involved three wheels. They found that that didn't work that well. Uh, not only was it not very stable, but it also tended to dig itself into the sand on a beach. They then looked at uh, go-kart tires to get a little bit more spread, but those also sank into the sand. So then they explored uh, modifying them by adding greater surface area. So they, were keep, they kept trying things and learning from them with a model that was sufficiently close to their intended concept that they could figure out if it worked or not. So the concept prototype, again, is relatively uh, low time investment to make, certainly low cost, but it has to be more complete than the concept model is. You might make a concept prototype by modifying a current design. If your sponsor has an existing product, ask if you can modify it in order to demonstrate your projected future concept. Uh, you can also buy some parts at a thrift store and see if you can put those together. You can 3D print some parts. You could maybe make something out of wood or plastic. All of these materials, fit them together, make your best demonstration prototype of your concept. The next level of prototype is a structural prototype. So after you have finalized your design direction and done some analysis to prove out dimensions, you want to make sure that that design direction still makes sense. So you need to decide what sort of structural prototype to make. There are really three basic alternatives. First of all, you might need a fully functional critical subsystem of your final design. So you're actually going to make one of the subsystems that's really important. Now, the reason that you might do that particular alternative is that you want to verify that function works. If it's a critical function, subsystem function, and it does not work in your prototype, then you need to go back and redesign that. You might also want to to make part of the system using the final prototype process. So you're not making a full structural prototype, but you're making a prototype to check out the process to make sure you can actually make the rest of your parts to discover how long it takes, for example. Or you might do a fully functional complete design, but you're doing it with simple materials. That will allow you to look at the overall functionality of your design and make additional refinements before you get into your final prototype. So you won't have time to do all of these things. One of them will make the most sense for your project. You need to make the decision which that is. I'll give you a few quick examples of structural prototypes. Automotive uses structural prototypes a lot to evaluate uh, certain aspects of the functionality of a vehicle without having to build the entire vehicle. Here's an example of a student project looking at a turbine drive, so an air-powered drill um, with a turbine internal to that. Welded table frame, this is from a project in 2017 at Cal Poly where the focus was on what the process is to weld that table together, uh, what sort of fixtures will be needed for the final design. Um, lots of examples in automotive, as I mentioned. Here's a Lotus Elan ch chassis. 
uh, with the steering included, so it's a way to, to check out some of the subsystems without building a full vehicle. Let's briefly talk about the final prototype that you'll be building near the end of the project. So what is it? It is your customer ready product. There are some industries where the final prototype is actually sold to a customer. Uh, you will certainly be delivering yours to your sponsor at the end. It is the production design, but it's going to be made from prototype processes. So you are not going to make hundreds or thousands of these, you're going to make one, so that means the process might be slightly different from production. But it's fully functional, it's aesthetically pleasing, it is basically ready to go. Why would you make one? Well, you've got to test your final prototype. You have to make sure that everything you want it to do, it will do. Test it to the design verification plan, and of course deliver it to your sponsor at the end. Now just to close out the loop, I wanted to show you the final prototype for the beach wheelchair that was made by the team in 2013. Just a few more quick tips. You need to make sure that everybody who is looking at or involved with your prototype knows what is real and what isn't because it won't look exactly like the final part. Everyone's got to agree on that. Make sure you do a lot of prototyping. You do it as often as possible. You make it simple and as cheap as you can to deliver your goal and then use it to do testing, gather customer information, customer reactions. Don't worry about making everything full scale. Sometimes a half scale model or a double scale model is more appropriate to figure out what it is that you need to know for your project. To close out our discussion of prototypes, let me talk about the development of the Leatherman multi-tool. In 1974, Tim Leatherman was on a trip in Europe and found that he had a great need for a simple tool that he could carry around in his pocket, but could do many different things. When he came back after that trip, he worked on developing what we now know as the Leatherman multi-tool. He started out by taking pieces of cardboard, cutting them out, pinning them together, seeing how he could get components to move appropriately. When he was satisfied with those, he moved on to develop some wooden concept prototypes to make sure that the function that he was aiming for could be achieved. He then developed some metal structural prototypes of the key functions and finally put that all together into a complete prototype with all of the functionality that he was able to test and eventually market. And that led us to the final production design for the Leatherman that we know today.